What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today in Scrap Mechanic and we're back with something that's a little more technical than usual even for my channel. A little while ago we had built this GPS drone here and really simply it uses uh, GPS coordinates from the mod pack and a bunch of remote controls, three remote control senders and one remote control receiver to control the drone and send it to whatever coordinates we want for delivering the package. So for example, we've got it set for these coordinates here, which is just a little bit uh, in that direction, pretty much just right there in front of us. And the drone will fly up, it'll go up to 2000 blocks in height, fly over the position and then drop the care package. So really a simple drone that just uses some cool GPS coordinates. But of course, this uses a lot of remote control blocks and I thought just for fun, We'll look at an encoder, and this encoder is going to be used for the three coordinates, but you can make encoders that do all sorts of things. So, for example, you can make an encoder that will... Actually, that was pretty good. That was pretty accurate. But you can make an encoder that will, for example, output speed, velocity from a certain creation. You can also make encoders to do multiple measurements of different angles. You could do encoders for all sorts of data. You could do it, for example, with the... Hello. With the messaging service, you could have an encoder as well, and you could have the encoder basically take the entire message, compile it into one value, send that single value, and then decode it on the other side. So they're really simple and really useful to use. This one is a very basic example. It's sort of a digit position encoder, but it takes all the GPS data, sends it through a single remote control connection here, and then removes the GPS data back out into three coordinates. So. If you look here, we've got our GPS position here. We've got an X meter, a Y meter, and a Z or altitude. I know a lot of people were saying, well, X, Y is the wrong. Y should be altitude, not Z. Uh, the reason I did it X, Y, and Z is, well, number one, that's what I'm used to. And number two, uh, in the mod pack, there's an X and Y, which are your two positions on the grid. And then altitude is up, which, you know, I figure we'll call it Z. But anyways, really simply, this is measuring the position and it's outputting it here to these three coordinates. Now it is rounding the values. You can see we've got these R and D blocks, which will in fact round the value first. So it comes out of there, it removes all the decimals associated with the coordinate and gives us a four digit coordinate. I believe the whole map is between 3000 or something like that, maybe 4000 in height, but it's a four digit coordinate. So we've got four digits for X, Y, and Z. And then we've also got these two other buttons here. So this is an absolute, which basically takes the value and removes the negative. So right here, for example, where we're at negative 366, this would say just 366. It would remove the negative portion of it. And then we've got this greater than next to each one of them. And that's actually checking if it's positive or negative. So you can see here it's positive, here it's negative, and here it's positive. And the reason why we have to do this is when we're encoding the data, all we're really doing is adding all the numbers together. And you can't add the negatives into the positives because then it'll change the value of the number. All we're really trying to do is save each digit into a different slot into a much bigger number and then send that one bigger number and then remove the different slots. So on the X position here, we actually take it and then we multiply the absolute value by 10,000, which gives it five zeros behind it. And then we take the one bit here, which lets us know if it's positive or negative, And we multiply that by actually 1 million, I believe. It puts it way up in this position here. And each number ends up being a five digit string instead of a four digit string. So what we're doing is we're making the fifth bit, the fifth number is the sign, whether it's positive or negative. So for example, in the Z side here, we've got the number 0004, and actually we can increase that. We can just put the whole thing on a lift. It now becomes 24, but we've got 0024, and it actually takes the Z and it divides it by 10,000 to make it the entire decimal. So the full number would actually be 11664, then 00364. So this zero represents a negative on the side here. So it's negative three, which gives it a zero instead of a one. So 00364, and then 10024. And really simply, it's just a matter of multiplying it and dividing it. So this one in the middle doesn't have to be divided or multiplied at all. So this would actually be basically in the hundreds of millions of range. So you'd be like 100 million is what we're sending with a bunch of decimals. So the encoding side of things is actually not as difficult as you would think. Really, we can get rid of all these extra digit blocks and all these digit blocks on the bottom. And we'd only need all these sort of blocks in the middle to make a proper encoder for XYZ coordinate systems. But then of course, the decoding side is where things get really, really complicated. So really simply, all we're doing on the decoding side is the exact opposite of what we did on the encoding side, which of course means nothing. But you take the initial number and you start with the biggest digits, so the 100 million range, the, the X coordinate. 
and we take that x coordinate we divide the whole number by 10,000 to bring it back down to a small number then we round off all the decimals because those are all the other coordinates and then we multiply it back up and subtract it from the original number and that will actually leave you with the remainder of the coordinates plus the x coordinate it's kind of complicated to explain the initial number that we divide and round is our first coordinate which is our x coordinate and you can see here it's 11608 compared to 1608 so the 1608 is correct and then this first one lets us know that it's a positive number and then we go to the second one so we pass on the remainder and the remainder of that function is going to be your second coordinate plus the decimal and so all we have to do is round off the decimal because that's this coordinate here the z is part of the decimal and then we do the subtraction from the value itself again and we end up with 298 and then finally with the z coordinate all we're doing is taking the z coordinate multiplying it by 10,000 to bring it out of the decimals back into whole numbers so this is a really really cool system to send a lot of data through just a single remote control and you could send different kinds of data like i said this is just gps coordinates which you know is whatever but it's it's kind of technical and i know this is a little bit much but i will upload this to the workshop just as an example of gps encoding if you guys want to take a look at it it's not really you know practical to mount this to anything you'd have to shrink the circuit but in case you guys are curious and really want to dive into how it all works you can take a look at you know the different values and stuff like that so what we'll do now is really simply run through how to set up a two data encoder which is just allowing you to send two pieces of information through a single number connection so we'll do x and y coordinates here we won't do the z it's a little bit more complicated to set all that up but really simply we can send x and y through a single piece of information so here we go we'll just output them right here two little gray numbers so in this case we've got x is 1642 and we've got y at negative 347 now we already know that these values are four digits long so we're going to have x be output as the number before the decimal and we're going to have y be output as the number after the decimal so we have to add the two of them together but first we're going to need to do two conditions so we're going to do one which is a check for greater than or less than which we'll do here so we'll do uh, greater than right and these will check if these values here so we'll paint these ones white and they'll check if the value is greater than zero and the second thing we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to round the value actually we're gonna have to do two steps here we're gonna have to round it and then we're gonna have to get the absolute so we'll round this value of course we'll round this value and then we'll feed it to the absolute and both of these checks are greater than we'll paint this black because it's by default zero and so now we can see this one is greater than zero and this one is not greater than zero so this is all the information we need from the system this will give us the value of 1642 this will give us the value of 347 without the negative and this lets us know that it's in fact negative this lets us know that it's positive so now all we have to do is add all the information together so really simply all we're going to do is take the x information from the top we're going to add it to a value so we're going to add the absolute value boom and we need to add it to 10,000 times this because this is actually going to be in the blue slot number position there so we're gonna take this multiply it by a counter like so and if this is a negative it'll be a zero and zero times whatever is zero so it doesn't really matter and our counter needs to be set to 10,000 which is the blue because we want it to be in the blue slot so boom there we go and now if we output this number we can actually see the addition on this number is our encoded information our information we're sending is 11642 which matches this and of course i actually switched these two to floor because i realized if you round it the decimal could be 0.5 it could round it up you have to actually have these as floor so it keeps that value at 11642 and then on the other side we've got the y coordinate which is 347 now it's a little bit different but sort of the same thing so instead of multiplying it we have to actually divide it so we've got the decimal output from the plus sign as well so really simply we take the absolute value and we have to divide it by 10,000 right here which will give us our value in decimal we need to divide it by 100,000 but there we go and then of course we need to actually put the sign bit on this because we haven't done that yet and that's really really simple to do all we do is we take the sign bit and we divide it by 10 and then add it as well to the number so we take that sign bit put it here we'll attach it to a block We'll divide this by 10 so boom that is a value of 10 now we'll attach it to there we attach the sign bit which is zero by default right now but if we were in a positive coordinate it would actually take this value which would be one one divided by 10 would be 0.1 and then adding it together would give you 0 0.10347 so there we go we've got our data encoded and it is now good to be transmitted through a single block then we can take this plus we can put it to there and we'll actually change this one to be green and then we'll put a receiver right here 
and again we'll change this to be green receiving so to get rid of this top value all we got to do is round off the bottom so really simple stuff there of course floor it so it removes the decimal so we'll take the floor of the math block boom so that'll remove the decimal and this should in fact be our one coordinate piece of information all right, 11573, and we'll have to decode that later, but that is the result of this, and there shouldn't be any decimals on that. We can actually check. We can paint one of these, but it should come up as a zero, which it does. So there we go. We've got no decimals, not a problem. Now, we need to get the decimal out, though, so all we have to do for that is take this value here and subtract it from the original value. So we take the original value minus this flooring result, and this it value here should only be the decimal portion it should remove 11,573 but it'll leave the decimal then of course we take that decimal we multiply it back by 10,000 to bring it back above the line or I believe no not 10,000 we multiply it back what we divided it by which was this 100,000 there we go and that should bring us back to a reasonable number here you can see 00541 and 11573 now of course we're not done we need to turn this into a negative number and we need to keep this as a positive number. So of course, to do that really simply, divide that number again by 10,000 and then we do the exact same sort of operation where we floor the result and that should tell us if it is positive or negative. All right, so now we know if both of these are positive or negative. Now I had to actually add a white block in here because we have to subtract this from the original, which needs it needs to be white minus black. And then here we have to do the same thing, white divided by black, but we need this value. So I just transferred that over really quickly to a white number block so it can then be divided over here again to get that floor. So now we have both of our numbers. We have 338, we have 11566, and we've got them both divided out so we can determine what the resulting value is. Now, of course... Really simply, we have to subtract 10,000 from each of them only if they have the 10,000 bit. So we can multiply both numbers by 10,000. Here we go. We multiply the floor by it there. And then that way you can see here, this floor times 10,000 is equal to 10,000. And we can, of course, subtract the one from the other. And we can paint this black to make sure it gets subtracted properly. And, and this end, same thing. We can do the same deal. But you can see this one is not actually lit up because zero times 10,000 is still zero. There's one extra step we need to do, which is then go back and multiply it by one or negative one to make sure it's complete. So here we go, we go multiply it, multiply, add the two of them together. And same sense here, multiply, multiply, add the two together. And on the one end, we multiply positive. And on the other end, we multiply the not of the positive. So we can put a logic gate there we can set it to a nor condition. And basically that tells us that this is positive. This is not positive. So there we go. That'll multiply and be a zero. Same sense here, right? So if it's a negative number like this one is, it'll go through this path. And if it's a positive number, it'll go through the left path. And then on the right path, we just put a number block, give it a value of negative one, which is one brown click. And now it'll switch the number to be negative when it gets multiplied by there. So result multiplies by both. And now our result here should be our coordinate in the proper four digits without anything on the fifth digit and the proper signage. A little bit confusing, I know, but you can do this for everything. Now, it's a lot less confusing, of course, if you're doing something like speed, uh, you know, altitude even. You don't necessarily need to have that sign bit that tells you if it's a positive or a negative number. You could just leave it without it. It really depends on the kind of information you want to send. And of course, you could do a system like this if you want to send letter information, send it through a bunch of different systems. So you could have a ton of different letters all being sent at the same time and really, really simple what you can do. So I encourage you guys to check out this larger one. I will upload it to the workshop. I know it's a little bit technical of a video today. It's very technical running through this encoding stuff, but I figured we should do something a little bit technical because it was really bothering me whether or not we could do this encoding. And I don't think for any GPS creations I do, I'll really include all this encoding stuff because it's a lot of extra math blocks that you have to have just to, you know, send all the information through a single remote control block where really we could send all the information in three different remote control blocks or four if we really wanted to. And because of the amount of frequencies that you have available on the remote control blocks, it's not like you're at a shortage or anything. So I don't think I would really do this, but I really wanted to do it anyways, just to sort of prove that it's possible and just show you guys a little bit about how you can do some basic encoding 
and sending a lot of data through a single packet of information. This also leads into encryption because we could take this and we could apply some function to it to change what the value is and then reapply the same function on the other end. And as long as people don't know what that value is, like let's say, you know, you multiply it by 59,286. Well, unless you know that you're exactly doing that, all the coordinates would come in jumbled and stuff like that. You could also convert them all to different letters and have a sort of encryption key that way. So a lot of cool stuff we could do there. But of course, let me know what you think in the comments down below. And while you're at it, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see y'all next time.